lies the port, the vessel puffs her sail, their gloom, the dark broad seas. My mariners, souls that have toiled and wrought and thought with me, that ever with a frolic welcome took the thunder and the sunshine and opposed free hearts, free foreheads. You and I are old. Old age hath yet his honour and his toil. Death closes all, but something ere the end, some work of noble note may yet be done, not unbecoming men that strove with gods. The lights begin to twinkle from the rocks, the long day wanes, the slow moon climbs, the deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, it is not too late to seek a newer world. Push off and sitting well in order smite the sounding furrows, for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. It may be that the gulfs will wash us down, it may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive to seek, to find, and not to yield.
Each year, the pouches fill, the skin is uglier. You give it all unflinchingly. You stare into yourself beyond. Your brush's care runs with self-knowledge. Here is a humility at one with craft. There is no arrogance. Pride is apart from this self-scrutiny. You make light drift the way you want. Your face is bruised and hurt, but there is still love left. Love of the art and others. To the last experiment went on. You stared beyond your age, the times. You also plucked the past and tempered it. Self-portraits understand and old age can divest. With truthful changes, us of fear of death. Look, a new anguish. There, the bloated nose, the sadness and the joy. To paint, to breathe, and all the darknesses are dead. You chose what each must reckon with. I remember so well walking down the platform and looking at the illuminated clock at the end, which told me it was half past 11. I remember also wondering whether I could get home before midnight. Then I remember the big motor with 
its glaring headlights and glitter of polished brass waiting for me outside. It was my new 30 horsepower robot which had only been delivered that day. I also remember asking per Perkins, my chauffeur, how she had gone and his saying he thought she was excellent. I'll try her myself, said I, and climbed into the driver's seat. The gears are not the same, said he. Perhaps, sir, uh, I should drive. No, I should like to try her, said I. And so we started on the five-mile drive for home. I got along very well until I came to Claystill Hill. It is one of the worst hills in England, a mile and a half long and one in six in places with three fairly sharp curves. My park gates stand at the very foot of it, upon the main London road. We were just over the brow of this hill, where the grade is at its steepest, when the trouble began. I had been on the top speed, and I wanted to get her on the free, but she was stuck between gears, and I had to get her back on the top again. By this time, she was going at a great rate, so I clapped on both brakes, and one after another, they gave way. I didn't mind so much when I felt my foot brake snap, but when I put all my weight on my side brake, and the lever clanged to its full limit without a catch, it brought a cold sweat out of me. The lights were brilliant, and I brought around the first curve all right. Then we did the second one. There was a close shave for the ditch. There was a mile of straight there, with the third curve beneath it. And after that, the gate of the park. If I could shoot up into that harbour, all would be well, for the slope up to the house would bring her to a stand. I'll stick it out, Perkins, I said. You can jump if you like. I'll stick with you, sir, said he. The wheels were whirring like a high wind big body groaning and creaking with a strain. It was a narrow road, and we were just a great, roaring, golden death to anybody who came into our path. We got around the corner with one wheel, three foot high on the bank. I thought we were surely over, but after staggering for a moment, she righted and darted onwards. That was the third corner, the last one. There was only the park gate now. It was facing us, as luck would have it, but not facing us directly. It was about 20 yards to the left, up the main road into which we ran. Perhaps I could have done it, but I suspect the steering gear had been jarred when we ran onto the bank. The wheel did not turn easily. We shot out of the lane. <clears throat> I saw the open gate on the left. I whirled round the wheel with all the strength in my wrists, Perkins and I threw our bodies across, and then, in the next instance, going at 50 miles an hour, my right front wheel struck full on the right-hand pillar of my own gate. I heard the crash. I was conscious of flying through the air. And then, and then, 